welcome everybody. I hope I, I will probably have a couple stra stragglers coming in, but I want to go ahead and get started. I hope that it stays just about this size um, so we can we can really dive in today. Uh, it's great to see you. Uh, it's been an awesome week. I, I got away this weekend. I got out of cell zone and out of internet, which we were just talking about, Beth. And man, 36 hours being, I don't know about you all, but I've gotten so addicted to my, like, I'll, I'll say, uh, I'm not going to, I'm going to go be with the family, no devices all night, right? And so the kids are all fine with it. They're like, okay, cool. Allison's fine with it. I'm like two seconds and I'm like, I just have to check really quick. Just one second, see if it, I don't know. So I had to force myself to go to the mountains and kind of break that. Um, yeah, that it's weird. I've never had an issue with devices or media. Or, and I, and my kids, my, I have a 14 year old daughter. That's like, Abba, you don't want to compare screen time with me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have more screen time than my 14 year old daughter who is home doing screen time for school. So anyway, that was a great break. But uh, today I, uh, we can, we can talk about whatever you guys want, but I really wanted to take off on the idea of, of, a, of a theme and something that really occurred to me as I was noticing all these posts lately. And this is whether it's like someone really trying to refine their deal and figure out a way to scale, or it's someone that's just launching and needs to grow really quickly. Uh, and just the, the concept of it, and I love, I'm looking at Beth's pillow behind her, which is, does it make you happy, right? And something I feel like I need to ask myself a lot and we all need to ask ourselves a lot is like what we're working towards, why we're working towards what we're working towards. And if where we're working towards is actually gonna do something that makes our life better than it is currently right now, uh, because uh, you know, so many people we know that have gone further along their paths or different paths, we see it's uh, that's not necessarily some kind of secret to, to being happy. And I wanted to hash that out together a little bit as we're all looking at our plans and our goals and what we wanna do next is, is just make sure that it's alignment to actually, A, make us happy, B, you know, realize that our work is purposeful and uh, gives us what we need to, to live the life we want to live uh, and blend in the concept that it's still work. Work doesn't have to be awesome all the time. Sometimes work can suck, right? That's like the universal thing. Sometimes you have to plow through things that are, that are difficult. So I was thinking that putting that lens or that frame over all the conversations we've seen this week, which is, you know, scaling, trying to get an extra 30 clients, needing to make an extra 5K a month. Uh, all, they all kind of fall into the same thing. It's like, hey, we, why are we doing it? How are we gonna do it? Um, maybe we just need to simplify and maybe we should just be happy with where we are before we jump because the, the wrapper is that if we're not stoked now, if we're not happy, we're not gonna be happy by ramping up a business more because the more business ramps, the more stress we have. Like, you know that, Beth, if you hire people, there's like other, other things that, that occur. So uh, I thought that'd be a great jumping off point that then we can move into this idea of what are we optimizing? What are we improving? Um, you know, what, what are we changing up and uh, sharing some ideas for that? So maybe it'd be cool since we have an awesome little group. Uh, oh gosh, it's Lieber. I'm not letting Lieber in. I'm going to let him in. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and maybe do a quick check-in. What we're doing, what we're working on. Um, and just take a minute or two to introduce yourself. We all know each other here uh, and maybe just talk about some high level stuff. So what's happening with you, Beth, you want to give us a little update on your universe? I'm so excited to see you. I'm trying not to like hear you slurp my, let you hear my slurping my coffee here. Slurp away. <laughs> Slurp away. I know I still have to eat my breakfast. All right. So, to, uh, so like Eric said, I'm an executive function coach. Um, I have, there's six of us. I started me solo six years ago, I guess. And I, there's five other coaches uh, because the demand got kind of high. So that's super cool. Um, I'm trying to get them to use funds and then I try to, I take a percentage of everything, but right now just one of them is, and I'm, I'm doing all the other bookkeeping and stuff uh, related to that. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but the demand for coaching is kind of high, especially during the pandemic. And um, I have a coach training that I do. So what I'm going to do is two things besides just coaching and stuff, which is busy, busy anyway. But I, rather than do the one-on-one -on -one thing uh, and have people on a wait list, not rather, but to supplement. I'm going to have a uh, do a coach mentor program where 
I was going to have, I have this program, I was going to have everybody kind of pay for it and then they could, then I'd refer them over. But we decided last year after a trial run that it's best to kind of have an expert coach mentoring another coach and then set, you just learn better hands on that way. So, um, so I'm going to uh, do sound academic coaching, have all the coaches under there, have a referral system. And then if they want to know how to set up their own business, I also have a uh, like a training for a webinar for that. So that's, that's number one. Cool. The other thing is we're doing a video package and Steve, this is why I was picking your brain, a, a video kind of package for um, the most common executive function issues that are, that families are having right now. So we're focusing things on like um, uh, procrastination and kind of the subsets of all that and then routines and structures. So those I'm having a coach. I want to pick your brain about this. <laughs> because she and I like to talk on Zoom a lot. So I was gonna do a slide deck and then she and I are kind of chatting about it. We record it, I'll edit out stuff and then make that a package of like uh, four, four 10 minute sections. And then anyway, I wanna talk some, I just wanna pick brains about that because I need to get that. We're working on the video right now, the storyboard, and I think it's going to be up and running soon. So those are kind of some things going on. Hey Beth, before we jump on or jump forward, you were really early in an executive functioning coaching, right? The do right. And it was like before it was a thing. Now it's a thing, right? Yeah. It's a, I think everybody else here, I think we're all music teachers except for you today. Mm -hmm. uh, but executive functioning has blown up. I'm seeing it everywhere now, right? And did, can you just tell us really quickly what executive functioning is and how, and you're like one of the main people that has been doing it since the beginning and how you got into it. And then, uh, you know, I, yeah, I've, I have an, a couple other questions too, but just give us a quick overview of what that's about. Okay, and anybody can ask for clarity, just like ch chime in. But um, so what it is, is executive function skills are kind of, they're coming from that prefrontal cortex, that, which is the last part of our brain to, to form. So basically your brain forms from the back to the front. Hopefully by the scientists say 25 years old or so, your prefrontal cortex is somewhat developed, although the jury's still out on that on many people I know. But from that, uh, you that's where most of your executive function skills kind of uh, work from. I mean, they're, they're working with time management, working memory skills, goal uh, persistence and goal setting, uh, tie, uh, material management, pr planning and prioritizing, you know, all those little Clumps that people say there may be five to seven, but I, I used a lot of research that says 11 is what we should focus on because then you can actually help with interventions a little bit better. So that even includes stress tolerance and metacognition. So just the minute parts of executive function uh, skills is the, our focus, our coaching focus. So um, I got into it because I couldn't find a coach. I was a classroom teacher. I was a specialist. I went to graduate school much later in life and uh, focused on people that have diverse learning needs. Um, no one could really be the coach for my younger son and he has ADHD. So I would, I hired a tutor like a few times a week and I told her what to do. <laughs> so it's like, well, he needs this skill so you can work on this. And I thought, whatever that worked cause I'm not the mom telling him what to do. So it came from that. And then I found uh, a lot of, uh, then I went to workshops and just started getting more and more experience with how a good coaching model might work. And then I developed kind of my own coaching model which is one goal setting after all the data is pulled in as far as questionnaires and surveys and all this stuff from the family and the students. Uh, I, I uh, do a goal setting session, now it's Zoom of course. And then that goal setting session is talking about uh, skills that need, we like to be strength based. So using great skills that you have to help boost up those skills that are challenge areas. Um, I can give examples of that later, but for the sake of time, uh, that goal setting session is working on the skills that need help, but what kind of strategies do you need to help build that skill? So like, what does your toolbox look like? Most people come to me with an empty toolbox because they don't have it filled up with strategies that will help them navigate school or function in daily life. Okay, take a breath. So um, that's, that's where we're going. And then, uh, let me see, you said you wanted to know well, what- So, so the reason I asked is because it's really, I think this is really important for us to all understand because hey, I'm working with a ton of tutors now, like all over the, the world, because those are, they're, they're coming in and they're, and tutors are generally doing well, but I've seen the executive functioning I, and people you've worked with. I think you're, you're working with one of my students right now. Maybe you are one of your people and that what it does 
it gives them a skill set that allows them to succeed in a major way, including in what we're doing together. Like, you know, it's skills kids don't have, and then they have them. And I think it would be, it's beneficial for anybody to understand how it works and what, how much they can gain from it. And, you know, the, the other, the, the re, and I wanted to explain it to everybody so they understood it. Cause I'm seeing with people I'm working with, how much it's helping them. Right. Yeah. And it's also such a growth area. Right. And it's, it's growing very quickly. At least it sure seems like it. We're seeing just people pop all, all over the place that are starting to do it and hearing much more about it. I wanted to, and I, Sorry to keep harassing you, and I promise we'll move on. When in the area of executive functioning coaching, I mean, you've, you're like a staple in Seattle. Everyone knows you. Could you give us like a ballpark of like what the range is for someone that's either just starting out as an executive functioning coach or someone that's like a superstar like yourself? Like what's a range of rates that people charge for that? So, you know, if you're in Seattle, that's one thing. If you're in New York, you're San Francisco, I think some of the or that um, there's people that can pay for it. We are kind of on the high end and I'm having coaching meetings talking about pro bono and sliding skills right now and actually diversity and coaching so we can really help a, our diverse population that we're not serving as well as- Sure. Like, because the socioeconomic thing is really a, a big issue for in my mind. We need to deal with this. So I will tell you like our top dollar right now is 125 per hour. Um, and we have two hours of coach contact per week. So it's okay. 250 per mm -hmm. week. And it's not, um, uh, some people have specialized programs. I work with adults and PhD students and, uh, some of the adults are like, can I just have you one hour a week? And I have a PhD student that has me three hours a week. So it just depends on what, sure. I, I hope that answers it. Um, some totally. of the coaches do, uh, the coaches that are in training often, you know, they'll do less than that, maybe a hundred bucks an hour. Um, and it just depends on the range. Yeah. Okay, cool. It depends on experience, the range. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah, because we're seeing, we just see such a wide range. Like, tutors have a very wide range, right? You know, nationwide, where, you know, you've got people that are doing $30 a session to $250 a set. There's like, there's just a really wide, you know, test prep seems to be something that's like a real hot topic that can, that can, people can charge yeah. a lot for, right? Yeah. I, I don't know if you see that, but because maybe that's the people that it attracts. But anyway, thank you for sharing. I, I hope I didn't put you too much in the spot. Uh, no, you didn't. It's fine. I just felt like I was trying to go fast so you could kind of get a big picture, but it's such a complicated field in a way, so it's hard to explain it. So I just wanted to tell you, for everybody today, <laughs> if you ever have a student where you're thinking, ah, you know, there's something going on, it's focused attention, it's memory, whatever, you can always just, um, you know, email me or our, uh, I Peterson Academic Coaching is my Facebook page. You can always message me. I'm happy to give tips. I really love sharing what I know because, and I need to write a book and I think the book is going to be yeah. called, and then COVID happened. <laughs> I think I we've, all got that book in the, we've all got that book in the works. Everyone yeah, here. Exactly. Okay. So happened. anyway, I'm here for you guys all to actually pick my brain too, for your students. Thank you, Beth. It's so good to see you. It's awesome. Um, hey, would someone else like to just give us a quick check in what's going on what they're working on anything. Can they... Joey, I see you unmuted. Are you wearing your um, blue light glasses too, Joey. I was yeah. Yeah, let's just go ahead and blue light it up. What's happening? What's happening? Give us an update. How are you. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that $125 an hour is a bargain. <laughs> it's like a really good rate. <laughs> I, yeah, that's a, it's like a really good rate. It's not, it's not expensive at all. I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know where you are, but if you're doing it online, it's like a great rate. You can probably rate, raise the rates if you want. Um, anyway, um, no, I'm doing good. I'm working on a bunch of different consulting projects. I'm also working on a lot of marketing for one of my, for my main music school right now. We're doing a, a big push on paid Facebook ads, um, which is cool. Um, we just launched our new website um just finished that um i basically dialed back like i've been working really crazy hours some weeks and then some weeks i just lay in bed and with my dog on my phone so it kind of depends but in terms of hours that i have to work now i'm like down to like three and a half <laughs> so <laughs> i like really delegate all my shit out you know <laughs> like once i hired out marketing then like i was like shit what the, what what 
what am, yeah i'm doing a, so I'm, I'm doing a four hour work, uh, well, but to be fair i'm doing a four hour, hour work week but like working like 80 hours so eh, but you know so, so you know i finally got down to that four hour mark like today i was just like lying in bed working on one of my um consulting projects uh because i help out musico so i was helping out with that in my facebook group um and then i'm still teaching a few piano lessons a week not that many i'm down to like 10 students a week right now uh, just, 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 just working with cool, cool people. That's the best. Yeah. It's, it's, it's awesome, man. Like I like cool work, working with cool, cool people. Um, and I actually, I had, I had someone who tried to join my studio recently. They paid me up front for the lesson and then turned out they were kind of an asshole. So I just refunded them and I said, no. <laughs> you know what, Joey, I got it. You know, I'm going to interrupt two things. Cause I, uh, you, you, you posted a really great piece of content with Ben this week. Oh, cool. Yeah. And that, I watched that and I got some great inspiration for teaching guitar from that video. Oh, and, cool. Badass. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, cool. yeah, you know, you know, every time you talk, I talk to you, you rarely talk about teaching music, but every time I ask you what you want to do with your life, you say, I want to be the greatest jazz educator in the world. Well, that is one of the things I want to do. Yeah. And I think you, I mean, you're really good at it. Um, and it's like, that video was great. And I was like, it's interesting that you your focus is generally like I'm consulting, I'm working 80 hours a week and then four hours a week. I'm scaling an online school. Well, 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 you know why is because, um, those things take the most work and are the most, like I've been doing the jazz teaching thing for like a while now. So like, it's, it's, uh, that's what I sound like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we spent a lot of time like, together. <laughs> it's like the thing is for me to become really good at jazz piano it's like i just that takes that is the least stressful or the least challenging of any of my projects so you know as an entrepreneur i'm like a moth to a flame of like the bright shiny marketing crazy stuff because i find it interesting you know but like you know like with one of my students the other day we figured out how to um use what i call rapid rapid kind of um rapid s stimulation to get them to get a concept where i drop one thing in their awareness and they fail drop another thing fail 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 and then they get it so it's like this it's this technique i've been using for, for jazz piano where a student like uh fails really rapidly for rapid succession events so and then but those failures stack on top of each other to give a final result of accomplishing what those failures have been stacking so that's just like what I'm developing right now. So yeah, I don't know. Like I, I just do shit and have a good time. Sometimes I work way, way too hard. I really screwed up last, last week. I was like, last week I got like no sleep. Like yesterday or whatever, I worked like a 14 hour day, but only got like four hours of sleep. And I was like, holy shit, man. Like I can't do that to myself, you know? So I think that my, my big struggle right now is that I'm just, I'm not structured. Speaking of executive functioning, I, I, was, I see, I see so that like this. So okay. That's being like, I could fix I, I am your classic ADHD child. So, so there's you know. smoke rolling out of Beth's ears right now. She's, so, <laughs> she's like, you let know, me at him. <laughs> I, I, am the, I am the classic executive functioning. Listen, when I was growing up, I had all the help you can possibly imagine. They gave me all the little compartments, you know, they gave me the colored backpack with little labels on it. I was like, no. And now I'm an adult with my own company, with my own projects, and I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to work now, so I won't. That's dangerous for an ADH person, you know. So, so um, my, you know, so the problem is when I'm left off to the races, I will work 80 hours or I'll work no hours. Like there's no, there's no medium here. There's no common ground here. <laughs> or spend a week just talking about wings. I literally will do that. In fact, I'm waking, I'm making wings later and like, I will just, I will just do that. I'll talk about wings for like five days and that'll be my work week. Beautiful. Well, good check-in. Um, and thank you, <laughs> and thank, you, thank, 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 you, thank, thank you, Joey. Thank, thank you for that. <laughs> that video you did with Ben is really good. Like you should post that more. Cause that, that I don't of, know how to do that. Wait. Like, I don't know how to get that because it's 46 minutes long of just great content. Like, you know what I mean? Well, you, well, that's a conversation, how to cut it up, how to edit it into like little, I don't, I don't know how to, I'll probably just hire it out. You do, but you can't do it. That, that is a massive waste of time to edit video because it's very time to do that. Yep. And it's really affordable. Um, 
you know, to, to get somebody to kind of break, to break Where that up. Where do you up find and, something like that? Is that like an Upwork type thing? I do. I use Fiverr or Upwork all the time for that kind of stuff. Yeah, you I, know, I, do I don't have a great I, relationship with somebody. I, w- I wish I do. I tried using like some former students that were looking. I, it's just, it's so quick to just blast it off, have them break it, put in the, the cut points cool. and have them yeah, clean it up. I got to cut it out. Anyway, I'll stop talking about my crazy ADHD life. I, I, I said that because of that. It was and, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> hey, Steve, do you have your blue light glasses on too? Yeah, I was trying to look as cool as Joey, but not quite, not quite working. Yeah, these my, my students are showing me the yeah the video filters and all that. Here's here I'll put this. Here's what I here's what I want to be doing actually, this year maybe, but we'll see. Um, I'll I'll off. jump in. Oh, I turned off my video. Let's try that again. Okay, so uh, I, I'm, I work like yeah. Speaking of yeah, I'm kind of wrapping up what Eric and and Joey were both talking about. Well, I'm. I know most of you, but I'm a saxophone player and teacher and um, teach, yeah, teach uh, improvisation. And uh, like what Eric was talking about, what makes you happy? I mean, I'm a huge fan of this idea of the lifestyle design, kind of like, well, what do I want my day-to-day stuff to actually look like? You know, not trying to force yourself into a model, someone else's model. You know, I've done that. I'm like, oh, I need to be a touring pro or I need to be, you know, get a tenure track college position you know then when i actually started going down that path i'm like oh this sucks i don't want to be i don't want to be stuck inside a university for the rest of my life like this uh you know trying to figure out what you know what you want your days to look like and then build the business around that but also yeah speaking of executive function i'm definitely like an eat the marshmallow kind of kid (laughs) like uh so i've really had to figure out how to hack you know like states of flow to get like lots of work done and kind of build instant gratification into the process of doing projects. Cause like, I can just like Joey, I can get hooked on something and just be working for days or other times I can't motivate myself to like put this little pile of checks in here into QuickBooks. I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. So I've had to build some, I've ended up kind of, instead of just trying to like learn how to grind it out and be have more mental toughness, I've kind of built my own little systems around, um, yeah, figuring out how to build the, enjoyable parts into it and like into the business plan. Yeah. It's a your natural state of being plan. like knowing yeah. yourself. Yeah. And then figuring out what I need to, yeah. What I need to outsource, um, like from like taxes and stuff like that. I just know I'm not going to do it. So I have to get someone else to do it rather than trying to force myself to do it. But yeah, I've been, I mean, as a lot of, you know, I, I released this, uh, my first online course, it's like an intro, like beginning jazz improvisation class. And it's a bunch of short interactive videos, a lot of call and response stuff, but I've been um, pitching it to music programs, some of these jazz bands that aren't able to meet, they can't rehearse traditionally because they're all on Zoom. But it's been, it's been picking up. A lot of schools, like dozens of schools have picked it up and they're using it to supplement remote learning. And I was just kind of looking at the numbers, but I basically matched my, I think I've just about matched my teaching income for the month by selling this course. No, and way. I haven't done any adver- I haven't really done any advertising, just an email in word of mouth. Like some of these band director groups are talking about it and s- submitting in resources. And I'm invited to present at some of these things. So I found like of all these various projects I've launched, this one's got some legs. So I'm even finishing the website behind it. I don't even, you know, the landing page and then getting some, you know, then looking at some advertising. But I know I've got the proof of concept and people are buzzing and talking about it. Um, so I'm really I'm really focusing on making that grow and. You know, I, I I'm getting I'm getting some really good feedback from people. Sure. How much time? Because I'm about to possibly do the same thing. But like, how much? How much time? How much time are you telling yourself you are willing to put into this? Like, to, uh, I'm having really a hard time saying this. Like, how how much time are you willing to? Okay, so you 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 achieved a certain financial results uh-huh. and you put a certain amount of time in to get that yeah how does that time feel and how much time do you want to put in in the future like what is your vision for it time wise you know what i mean like I what is your vision yeah you know what i mean yeah well this is based on i've sort of developed this over teaching in-person workshops for 15 years and figuring out what works and i've built relationships with people who like this kind of thing mm-hmm. so this is part of like an ongoing You know, I've been, this has been part of my, part of my teaching mission for a long time, making improvisation more accessible to more people to build it into mainstream music education. So I've tried, you know, I had a book that like, this is way, like my book took eight years to write and it's gotten some sales, but I never saw much, 
you know, not paying the bills off of that. So this seems just like a way more efficient use of time. But for this one, like we're talking in the Fonz group a bit about um, minimum viable product, kind of doing a small yep. version, making sure people want it. What's the lowest risk, least time intensive way to make something that people will like and then build it from there. So I've got people on my team who are paying for it. They're asking for more and developing the right stuff. So it doesn't feel like a waste of time. So now that I know that it's viable, I mean, this class probably took, I didn't, who knows, like several weekends, you know, probably, and then the editing, you know, hundreds of hours, but now it's like getting out there. It's probably like hundreds or thousands of students using it now. So knowing that it's got that kind of, it's starting to have an impact that motivates me to keep doing more. Um, so the time, I mean, it was kind of a grind recording all these things and just getting used to recording myself, which I didn't like. And now it's just to record, you know, recording these on some of these. Yeah, it was, it, it could be a grind, but it's, uh, it's worth it, but that I know that it's, it's kind of getting the right result that motivates me to keep going. If I was just grinding, grinding, grinding with courses and it was all crickets. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to, you know, Steve, I think that's what I, I, when you've had that post this week and you were talking about minimum viable, viable product and getting something out there, I was really hoping you'd talk about it today. Cause you know, you have, you just like all of oh. us, you have all these irons in the fire and you had this and everybody here has got a project they're working on. That's, that's something mm -hmm. like that. And it is really helpful when you get some positive feedback out the mm -hmm. gates when you're like, or, oh. or none, or I've launched stuff. It's like, Oh, this is a great idea. And I try to tell people about it. Oh, this would be good. Like, and you're like, Oh, that sounds kind of interesting or no one really cares and no one bites. And then, yep. you know, it's not that it's a bad idea, but it's just not resonating with the right people at the right time. So it's just going to be an uphill. It could also battle. be but, timing. Yeah. Be, oh, well, know. yeah, for now, this thing, if I had released the same course three years ago, it might've gotten some traction, but now people are needing stuff right now. So, it's yeah it's the secret of comedy timing you know you know one of the one of the main recurring themes you see just in the startup twitter sphere right now is the idea of like founders becoming too innovative right building these like really innovative products that like people are like i'm not using that i'm not gonna yeah you know the timing's off or you know the demand's not there so it's um you know it's interesting that you, in this case you're like oh you put this out yet you, you had a great response to it and now you're like you're gonna jump on it so that's pretty yeah. awesome but I was going to say, I was excited hearing Beth talking about, cause I've taught, I've been talking to lots of people about their projects, but Beth already has the business. You've got a, you've got clients, you've got people who are interested. It's the right timing. So I can imagine your, your product can be really successful cause you've already built the network. Cause like you've got, you've got the people, you've got the other teachers, you've got the people you've been serving and that you have people who know you and like you and depend on you. That may, I think that's the only thing that has gotten mine off the ground. It's not just that I made something that was effective or good or whatever it's that people already trusted me yep and then yeah that's that's huge so i um, like i have a question for you though i i yeah. love i just am so inspired by you really and i i'm oh, i ha, i know i have a lot of great ideas but where in the hell do you find the time <laughs> i'm having oh. a really hard time like i i'm not gonna wake up earlier because i am so tired all the time um <laughs> i mean i get up early enough and i've been i it's good you know it's good but uh yeah where do um, my biggest problem because I those like you said they take a lot of time and I'm having planning meetings every week and I'm working on it every week but it's like oh well you know the pandemic's gonna be over by the time I'm really oh, ready yeah to uh well it was does I mean I don't know I've, I've got one kid and she's luckily pretty she's got her little little alarms that tell her when to sign into school and stuff she's doing that now so that's 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 helpful but I mean part of it is just not over scheduling myself. You know, I figured out what I specialize in. I was able to raise my rates, not super high, but I've just built in lots of time. And a lot of time I'm like, Joey, I'll freaking lay in bed and play with my phone and do nothing with the time. I'll totally waste it. Like spend that time. Like I just build in time to be able to go outside, spend time with my kid. But then sometimes that time that I waste a lot of the time, I'm like this weekend I'm filming all day and, and I'll just hit it. So I build a lot of time, a lot of time just to kind of you know, I always want to take a walk every morning, just getting my thoughts kind of ired out. But then it's sort of stra strategy as well, being like, I need to, I need to focus on this project right now, um, and keeping the rest of my business stuff pretty lean. I don't have, I don't manage anyone else. Um, I just do, you know, I'm doing lessons and workshops. So trying to keep everything else really simple. So then when I have a project, which might be a record, or in this case, it was the course, I just have built in time. So when I've got an important project, I can, um, sink time into it. I'm not sure if that really answers the question, but, it, but it's by, it's by design. Cause I know that I wanted time, 
you know, hey, I want time in my day so I can practice, so I can play a late gig and sleep in the next day. I like, but now there's no gigs. Um, Steve, that, that you know, kind of thing. I, uh, what you're saying is really resonating because what in, in a couple ways is that you know you're coming into your own like you're figuring out who you are you like got your flow down you know how you get stuff done over time right yeah. you get these big ideas and man so something really i read something by this this uh, the kind of entrepreneurial person this week that was like oh you know what people should just like go to business school and later in life they should go to art school and study culture once they're comfortable doing so and i was like what a dipshit thing to say man like that's so like cuz well, you're, you're like using all the skills you've learned of like being a gigging musician. We're survive, you know, as creatives, we've had to survive. We've had to be, learn how to be creative, how to solve massive problems with our minds and our expressive nature. And then we get to a point where now it's like, we can learn the business side of things and we can learn how we, op, how we flow and we can get help if we have executive functioning issues to become more uh, productive in what we need to do. And so, you know, I, when I was hearing you talking, I was just thinking about that that article I'd written and how you're kind of like the proof of the other side of it, that it's like, you're, you're figuring all this stuff out. You're all this hard work you've done before is now making a compelling product. Like when you put stuff out, you're like, Oh yeah, that dude was in the New York times or whatever. And you know, whatever got nominated for a whatever award and uh, has been knows everybody in the scene and has built this trust. And now you can, you're learning these tricks of like the trade and um, marketing and that stuff that you can just do. So I, I like that you've got your, the way you've got your scene set up. Hey, before, hey, I wanted, I saw, Tony, do you have a special visitor here? I'm moving my way across, but um, I, I saw someone, it looks like the person who might run your life. Was, <laughs> what, well, I, it's, 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 it's one of the three children that run my life, yeah. The, uh, yeah, that was my daughter. She, uh, she popped over for a little bit. So I'm, as you can see, I'm in a different location today. So I'm in the house, uh, I'm, at, I'm at my grand piano here. Okay. Um, I saw, so I didn't yeah, mean to interrupt so, that uh, flow, but I saw the executive director there and I just wanted, I was hoping we could say hi or just yeah. say really quick. Okay. Uh, she's, 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 she's supposed to come back at some point. <laughs> okay, okay. Great. Yeah. Okay, sorry. <laughs> if so, if you want to continue with Steve, if you still got to go. Oh yeah. Were, or, or if you want, were, I can jump in. Were, were you good there, Beth? Did that kind of get you? And Steve, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just see a kid and I just lose it. You know how it goes. You sleeping? No, it's all good. Awesome. Well, hey, Tony, you want to take this moment? We're just kind of, Tony and Karen, just kind of. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, or Karen, do you want to go first? Sure. I mean, um, not a whole lot to report. I, I'm just, <laughs> yay. I've got Karen's artwork. It's awesome. I took it down just to show you. It's, it goes right back behind my, next to my I, guitars. I actually saw it back there. I'm like, I think that's, I, I think that's what it is. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's interesting. You know, that project is a little bit, it's not really on pause. It kind of put itself on pause as I realized that, I mean, it was just kind of amazing. I literally have filled nine orders so far. Eric, I just want to let you know, you were actually the first person to order for me. I know it said order number three on it, but the first two were test runs for me. Um, but yeah, no, uh, it, it's very encouraging for me to hear so many people talking about like the deterministic chaos that is their organizational system that seems to work and produce a whole lot of amazing stuff because that's exactly where I am right now. And for so much of my life, I just got the message constantly, like you have to be organized, you have to do this. And, you know, there's certain things that I've had to get better at, you know, that haven't come naturally to me, such as keeping my house clean, making sure that stuff, you know, making sure I keep food in the fridge because right now my husband's the main breadwinner and, um, he also has a disability, which makes it very difficult for him to do house chores. Um, so I kind of run that whole thing. At the same time, I've been just feeling exhausted. And I have to step back and remind myself, I'm working on two big projects right now that are in entirely new territory for me. Or new-ish territory for, for the, in one case. So the affirmation art is the first one. And the, the encouraging thing that I realized is I start posting about it. And I get orders really quick, quickly, you know, because I have targeted marketing and I'm not even having to pay for it because I'm in these Facebook groups and most of them have designated self-promotional days. Um, so I, if I just want things to slow down, I just stop posting for a bit. Um, so that's, that's come in handy. That's just been kind of a relief just to know that that is a possibility makes me feel a little bit less anxious about it. So that's, that's the one thing. Um, 
And the other thing is I'm in the home stretch of preparation for recording an entire virtual opera. Um, there's three comp opera companies in Southern California who are, um, who have, um, um, what is the word? They're working together. Um, collaborated, that's the word I'm looking for. Who are collaborating to put on um, Suor Angelica. And um, I'm singing the role of the abbess and I'm also singing all the chorus music. And so I've been just spending a lot of time with the conductor piano track because I'm having to do all of my parts without hearing all of the rest of the parts. Ooh. And it's, it's kind of a cool moment when you realize that you've gotten to a skill level where, yeah, this feels a little bit, you know, feels a little bit challenging at first, but you've totally got the skills to do it and you just have to keep, you know, spend an hour or two each day with that conductor track and then things sort of magically work themselves out. You know, the whole, it, it's like watercolor and you have to kind of have to let each layer dry after a while and after a while the picture's there as opposed to painting a wall I'm just going to go through from A to Z and learn this whole part. You know, just a big, a lot of learning how to accept the way I learn um, which is just kind of a little bit of everything all at the same mm -hmm. time and do that often enough and all of a sudden like the end product appears um and i don't know if i'm typical in that as a musician but there's a there's a certain amount where you just have to kind of get the music into your blood um you're ultra focused as opposed to just, as opposed to just learning it by rote so that that is really cool those are all awesome things so yeah that's that's kind of what my what my days are like right now and so often last week i've and also trying to keep up my exercise routine which i've kind of I'm not doing Insanity Max 30 anymore. Um, hey, we're going to cut you off right there. That's enough. We're not going. <laughs> <laughs> Someone mute Karen. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Sorry. Dang, we're, we're just, next week, I'm back. Next, yeah, next, next week, we can talk about that because I'm going to make a positive change. Hey, Karen, yeah, I want to interrupt you. Exercise thing, yeah. Anyway, all to say, just so many days where I get to the end of the day, I'm like, what did I do all day? This feels so disorganized. And I realized, nope, I was actually working on stuff all day. And it's not necessarily obvious what the end result is, but I just got to keep at it. So, um, you know, I wanted to, before, uh, I, I wanted to quickly. I've been thinking about you this week and, you know, I, I, I love this art that you did. I really appreciate it. But I also, it inspired me and it, with everybody else here, you know, what Steve was just saying, you know, I've spent eight years writing this book. I didn't really make a whole lot of money from it, but it, it kind of moved me forward. You know, what I was thinking about you as I was looking at this thing, you, what you've done is you have created an outline of your, of your talking points by, through your artwork. If I were managing your universe, I might encourage you to be like, okay, Karen, singing comes, singing's natural. I really, this one really spoke to me, right? It's just like how I express myself. Everyone's born knowing how to sing. Mm -hmm. That right there is enough. You know, this is, we, it's sitting right in front of you. I bet you could write a thousand pieces of content based around sings natural. Oh yeah. No, I've got so many. I mean, if you even knew the amount of ideas and like talking points and blog points that I want to address on my website because this whole thing has started to organize itself around there and that's what I'm all of a sudden realizing I need to figure out a way to manage this and figure out a way that I just do a little bit at it every single day or at least you know right now I'm giving myself a pass until I've finished recording Squad Angelica because yeah. that's yeah that's just but, but and, you know, and the thing is, is and what we can talk about this more, but I would say you're like, once you get through this major project, it's like, I would love to see you doing content based around your artwork, right? Where there's, where there, because no one's just like, no one's just going to your website being like, I'm going to Google singing naturally, but they might Google or they might be on Instagram and see a 50 minute or 50 second quick little, Hey, um, you know, this is, the voice is natural. Just taking on any of these, these spots with something quick, quick cut up. You could create great content around that because I'm following a lot of the vocal coach, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook stuff. And there's a lot of it's out there is very much about me. Like it's, they're vocalists, right? Of course it's going to be about them. And so they're, and the ones that are out there are like, hey, here's something to think about when you're singing today. You were born to sing. It's natural. You know, just do it. I think you could create a really awesome content stream, which is the stuff you talk about, you know, you're so yeah. focused and you're so, and just not being perfectionist about just, you know, one of the great, um, a great advice I got is that you can, social media is really, it's not so much about putting a, a pro, uh, 
a product out to be like, look at this fancy thing. People are really gravitate towards your story and your process. Like it's yeah. really great to post about your failures, right? It's really great to post, you know, something you tried that didn't work. You know, I'd love to read about what's that. I started a blog. There's like three posts up there right now. And it starts right in the middle of almost exactly a year ago. I had like a massive vocal crisis right. Oh, I read that. A, yeah. Right in the middle of a professional gig. It was horrible. And honestly, it was one of those moments where so much work that I'd done just mentally. And that's the whole thing. Like there's this whole emotional element that then becomes technical because if you're trying to portray fear or portray crying or portray some sort of emotion that you personally subconsciously have a problem with expressing or have a personal rule against expression, expressing your body's going to fight you on it and you're not going to be able to sing all of a sudden. So Tension. all of that work that I had done enabled me to be able to get out of that at least enough to finish my gigs there. And then, you know, within a week or two back, all, well, not quite to almost to normal, but all to say there's so much like this whole overlap of the psychology, but then there's also the technique and then there's also the, there's also the physics behind it. I mean, my, my, my brain is just, it's like a nuclear reactor most days. And I, I, I had, yes, it is. <laughs> yeah. You guys, it's a beautiful nuclear reactor though. Contained so I don't like dominate. Um, <laughs> it's but, a beautiful yeah. nuclear reactor. Uh, wait, excuse me just a second. Wait a second. Pardon me, Karen. Um, no we need to take just a moment to check in with our senior director of development, Ella. Well, hang on one second. There, uh, we'll take a special visitor. Yeah. All right, Ella, you're, they're going to talk to you. Okay. Why? I, I, had to, I had to switch to get off my headphones. Oh. Hey, hey, Ella. Hi, Ella. I'm a, I'm a, we're friends of your dad's. We're just hanging out, chatting. How are you doing? Good. Good. Can we see and what your mask I looks like? Unicorns. What? Look at your gloves. Hey, can you do this with your shirt and make it go the other way? Does it change if you, if you rub it up? Hey, rub your shirt. Like this. Wait, is that a hedgehog or is that a cat? I can't tell. It's a cat. Sorry, I'm old. I'm old. Come That's on, fantastic. Eric. Don't you know anything? <laughs> I, I need these glasses, Ella. Well, it's nice to meet you. Do you have any advice for us or anything? Anything we need to know? Any advice? Um, I love unicorns and, <gasps> and that I watch Bendy videos. Wait, what Bendy, videos? This is Bendy in the ink machine. Apparently it's like, it's uh, it's kind of like, like inappropriate for children her age. It's like really scary, but Ella is like, Ella, Ella's very much into like scary stuff, right? You like scary stuff. Oh, cool. Well, so. it's great to meet you, Ella. Thanks for saying hi. Stop by anytime. That's adorable, Tony. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it's funny because, like, I remember I, I saw like somebody share a meme on there, something about, like, you know, well, my daughter just said she wanted a cat, so we're going to watch Pet Cemetery tonight. I'm like, <laughs> so, like, to, so, like, I'm like, that wouldn't work with my daughter. She'd be like, that's yeah, awesome. You know, like a cat that keeps coming back. She, you know, she enjoys the macabre, huh? Well, thanks, for thanks sure. for the sighting. Dude, what's, what's yeah, up with yeah. you, Tony? Get, Give us an update. Yeah, I don't. Um, I I um I like to come hang out at these because I don't I don't think about the business stuff as much. Hey, honey, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause it, okay? The um um because I'm just gonna talk for a few minutes, okay? The um yeah, so um you know I I, I enjoy hearing about this because it's motivating for me because it's something that I don't um instinctively like really want to pay that much attention to is like all the the business side of it. I. I really enjoy the teaching and, and all that. So, um, but you know, it, these things are important to me and, and what you were talking about at the beginning, you know, I, I, I like to think about that a lot too. Like, you know, our, our daily actions kind of mapping to the things that we claim that are important to us, you know, and um, you know, we can, you know, I can sit here and say like, you know, spending time with my family and, and my children, it, you know, it's, or, or, you know, working on my potmatics and, and trying to get that out there. But if you go like all CSI on my like daily rhythms and it's like, you can see like I'm wasting tons of time, like just responding to emails and things that are really not that important. So I'm trying to get myself to a place where I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm a little bit more intentional with how I'm spending my time. Um, and, uh, you know, our, our friend Angela is helping me a lot with that because she really wants to see me push things forward with um, my materials and stuff. And I, I get great response. I, I think I sometimes get really comfortable with the, the thought that like, I do really feel like I'm onto something special. 
and um, I wish I could get myself to feel like a little bit more of a, a push, you know, um, to, to just keep working on it or find some type of rhythm. But I just, I feel like there's, um, there's, I don't, I'm, I'm not so great at like dialing in like, okay, like every morning I'm going to get up and between eight and nine, like that's going to be, you know, time for me to go work on this project. Huh. And so what ends up happening is, you know, throughout the day, um, I, it's just like the, the day, kind, the days can kind of get away from me sometimes. And um, I get the feeling sometimes like, you know, I know people are waiting on something or, and I'm very good to kind of like put out the fires, but I, I really need to start like, you know, kind of like gathering the wood and like getting ready to like, you know, put something out there. So, you know, it's, it's for me like this time here, like kind of blocking off an hour to just come and listen to everybody's projects and stuff. It's like, I'm working on them too. It's just, I'm working on them a little, little more slowly. I think sometimes um, I put a lot of care and thought and attention into everything that I'm doing. I want everything to be, I want everything that I do and everything that I share to be really meaningful and impactful. So even to just simple things like sharing a post in, in, in a group that I run, like, I don't, I don't want to just put out a filler thing or, Hey, this is coming soon or anything like that. I, 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 um, I kind of want to wait until I have something that I know is going to be really well received, hmm. but at the same time, I'm trying to find some type of balance where like, I don't, I don't get this reputation for kind of like, falling off you know I want to I want I want to maintain some consistency so that's that's where I'm at right now mm. and um and just trying to to the 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 quest for balance kind of which is I'm a Libra I should be good at this but me too buddy yeah <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. We, we want the balance you know, let me let me interject a, or with a couple ideas you know uh about things that I just heard you say and I think that are it seems like everybody here we're all kind of in the same a very similar space moving in a very similar trajectory, although there's some variation in our, what we're focusing on, how we're spending our time, but we all seem to have these kind of same underlying themes, but you have a, you know, Tony, you've built a brand, right? Whether you know it or not in the piano world, you've built the brand as the someone that's happy. Right. And when I was thinking about the topic for this week, uh, when I was picturing people that I knew that had a ton uh, that were very successful, whether it's an entrepreneurship or for whatever reason, that were extremely unhappy. And then I thought in my mind of people that I know that were really happy, you came up as a person that's like, oh, that's a person. So it's like, at the end of the day, I was telling Joey this, cause he, you know, he's always trying to think about how he's gonna make crazy money. And I was like, it doesn't matter if you're not happy. Like you're not getting that. You haven't had enough mentors in their seventies or eighties yet. You know, I keep this picture of, of this beastly human who's like 83 now or 84, traveled all over the world. He's the happiest person I've ever met. And he's like a school teacher and he's reminded a constant reminder of that all this stuff. It's like, if we're not happy, it doesn't matter. But you, your brand is built around seeming kind of like you're the happy person, right? That's like loves working, puts that in energy into the kit, into your students, your clients freaking love you because you, you do, you give them a piece of that. And you know, you also are sitting on this great idea, right? That you could, you could scale. And so you, you want to optimize it and you, and you also want to be impactful. So you're like, how can I get this idea out to more teachers so they can pass it to more people and maybe make them a little bit happier too? That's a noble pursuit, right? And what's crazy is that nobody today, I mean, Beth said she was exhausted. We all agreed with that. But um, Karen said she's overwhelmed and exhausted. We are living through the craziest year in the history of years, <clears throat> right? I mean, it, it doesn't really, we don't really call it by name when we're ever in these groups, but we are living through the most bizarre, traumatic, crazy experience. Our kids are living through a bizarre, traumatic, crazy experience, and it's going well, but people like you are vital, right? Because somehow you're like, you might not be consistent in your posting, but every time you do, it's like, <laughs> life's okay, right? Like, love your kids, do your, do your deal. And there's huge, well, yeah. huge value to that brand. I think so many people rely on that and think of you in that way. So being slow and fastidious about releasing your stuff, I mean, that's, that's fine. You know, you got to do your thing. Yeah. You know, it's like when I, when I, when I saw your, your post, you know, the, your, your, your post with the, with you out at that, that beautiful landscape there. And it's like, those are, those are the moments that, that I, that I live for and that I, I love. And I feel like have been, you know, 
not stripped away from me, but I, I allow myself to get wrapped up in like what everybody else is expecting from me or, or wanting from me. And, um, but as you can see, like if, 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 um, if I'm working on any kind of project and my child comes in and says they want to play, like immediately it stops and my attention goes there. So it's, um, you know, it's, I, I, um, I, I feel, I, I do, I feel really good with where I am. <laughs> I just feel I'm like, I'm, I'm happy where I am, but I do, I do want to scale it in, in, in some way. I don't, you know, know that it's ever going to like, I don't have any like um, thought of like what it needs to be or it has to be like, I'm still very excited when, when I, when I sell a book or someone purchases the, you know, the, the ebook version of my materials. And and at the same time, it, it brings me a little bit of anxiety because I'm like, they're, they're not going to know how to use it because, but every, every teacher that's working with me that, that takes the time to invest, like Angela asks the questions and there's Joellen in the group and Kayla will ask questions. And, and, you know, I, I have, you know, all the people that are working with me, the great thing is, is it's, it's, everybody's loving it and they immediately go and then use it with their students. So it's not only an investment in their own learning, but it's like, then they can immediately take these lessons and use them with their students. Hmm. And I keep, I keep filling in the gaps. So there's a lot of, to me, I see all the value in that. And, um, I guess this idea of like writing, I'm, I've been trying to figure out like how I'm going to like write materials, like a book in a way that's like, I mean, do I need, really need to sit down here and explain like what a suspended chord is? Like, do I, do I want to get into this and say like, okay, we're going to, you know, like, like the technical parts of this. It's like, like, everybody's already talked about that. You can go online and figure out how to do this. For me, it's more of like, you know, the, 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 the way that you approach it, the way that you think about it, the way that, you know, um, the activities I have surrounding bringing creativity into the lesson. Those are all the things that inspire me, but I just get a little wrapped up sometimes with not necessarily like I have my materials and I know that anybody who takes the time to, 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 to um, really understand it, it's going to be great. But I also know it's like, I'm, I'm sure, you know, Steve, I'm sure you've probably been asked a million times, like, what's the best jazz book, <laughs> you know, the, what, what jazz book do I get to like, you know, and it's like, a lot of this stuff, it's like, yes, you can, you can deliver information through text and written examples and all this stuff, but it's really the, the hands-on experience. So I'd love to do more. Um, I'm really happy. Like I now have like probably 90% of my clients in funds. So my administration stuff is like really dialed in now. Like that's, um, and I, I do want to explore a little bit more because I know you have all like the workshop features and things like that in there. And I'd love to do more of that because when it comes down to it, like a course, like the, I've said before, I do want to make sure that I have some type of like live component in there where people are getting direct contact with me. I don't want to just sell a course and um, on, as, as its own thing, because I just think it, it's going to need, it's, it's my whole approach to teaching piano is essentially to disappear and just listen and wait for questions um, and to interfere as little as possible, you know, and, and, and not um, make sure that anything that I'm, I'm saying is like improving on the silence because I think, oh, you can come sit on my lap. Um, mm, so th listen. those are, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure that, um, that I'm, I'm moving forward in a way that's consistent with, what I believe and, and, and kind of delivering that information in that way. And that I'm never just, um, I'm very conscious about like making sure I see a lot of people that put out content sometimes. And I, sometimes I feel like it, it, they just get wrapped into this thing of like, I'm just going to create a new book and new content, but it's, it's, you know, it's like, okay, well, how many times are you going to have the student play like almost the same song with just a different title? It's, it's for the sake of content, not driven yeah. by some kind of end goal. Well, and I think- I want, I really want it. I, I want, I want, I want just, hang on one second, honey. The, uh, I want, I really want just, yes, you can stop, honey, for a second. The, um, I really want just like exactly the right amount of information. I don't want any fluff and I don't want, um, but I also don't want people being, feeling lost. So I'm just, I'm still just navigating all that. And these, these talks are very inspiring to me because I yeah. hear everybody working on their projects. You know, Tony, it sounds like, um, a great copy editor 
it would be a powerful tool. I don't know if you've ever worked with one, but they're amazing. You know, where they can distill exactly what you just said and know your underlying theme of disappearing and listening in the silence and then somehow manage communicating that in a way that people can get it. Um, yeah. That's something I found, you know, from everything you were saying, it sounds like oh, a copy editor might be a really great person or uh, someone with a business vision that can kind of take over the heavy lifting and let you be yourself. Well, that's what it is. Cause actually a lot of people come to me with their copy for me to edit because I'm known for kind of like getting everything mm -hmm. down, like simplifying it as much as possible. So actually doing that is, 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 is kind of okay. It's just, then presenting it and, say, and saying to someone, okay, do you understand it with that much information or do I need more? Like, do you have questions at this point? But um, yeah, when it comes to the website stuff, I'm, I'm sitting here like waiting to hire stuff out. Like I, I want a website, I, I do. I don't wanna do it myself. Um, I know I, I spoke with you about that. I asked you, you said maybe like a landing page would be a you know, good way to go because I, I do want it to be simple. I, I just, I want something where I'm gonna be able to like I have 350 books that I bought that are sitting in boxes upstairs that are waiting to be sold. I paid somebody $350 to make me these like digital mock-ups. I've got these beautiful things of my digital mock-ups of my book. I've done nothing with them. They're just sitting on my hard drive. And so they're just waiting. So I do need to do like what you're talking about. I need to like, like there's 350 books upstairs that I purchased that I should be selling. Like people buy them and, and I, and I go and I mail them out, but it's like, Everybody has to like ask me for the link, like where is you know oh. how do I buy your book? So I'm getting I'm I'm already at the place where it's like people are waiting. Like if I actually had it all up and running and I just shared a post, I'd probably sell a bunch of books. So you know what I think I think a really cool oh, yeah. topic. <clears throat> oh sorry, go ahead, Steve. Oh sorry, Karen had something before me, but yeah, I've got. Oh, I just yeah. want to say if you just want again, I'm not a professional at this, but I did just put figure out and put together a website to actually sell my own physical products. So. And it's and good. My whole thing is simplicity. So if you just, I mean, again, not the expert, but a few years experience of putting, I have two different websites that I run. And if you just want to sit down with virtually at some point, and I can help you out with that. I mean, getting started yeah. is the hardest part. Yeah, your flow is great, Karen, on your website. Yeah, I, I was going to say the same, well, a, a couple things, but yeah, I mean, you want to hire out the web thing, that would be cool. But you can sit there on Squarespace. You can make a landing page and a shopping cart. You could do that with a pot of coffee. You've got photos already. You just drag the photos in, make a shopping cart. You could do that part in an afternoon, and then it's up. And then you can hire a web person to make it fancy. But I was going to say, it sounds like, so Tony, if I was going to buy your Pop Maddox book right now, I've only heard every, other people talk about it. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know too much about it. And I look at it, I go, how do, I'm not quite sure how to use this. Do I have to hire you to learn how to use it? Or is there some other training thing that's up? Or that's what we're talking about. You're muted. You're muted. Sorry about that. So yeah, so at, the, at this point, it's, um, again, when I designed the book, the book mm -hmm. was designed and with the intention that it would be for students. I was, I was doing it as this way of like, this is what I'm going to do to attract my ideal clients. Mm -hmm. um, and then it turned out that a lot of my ideal clients ended up being piano teachers who were interested not only in learning this approach for their students, but also for themselves. So, um, and then that's where, you know, people started sharing things or people would ask a question and they would say, hey, go, you know, Tony's group. So I have this group where I occasionally share videos and things, but there's not like a linear, like what, we, what you have is like a curriculum with a very linear process. It's like, I've made, you know, videos explaining things before, but anybody purchasing my book for the first time, yeah. if they understand, you know, they, they're going to see some really cool charts and things, but they're not really going to understand the intention behind it or like what they're supposed to do. They'll see the information, but they won't get all of that, that like special yeah. information. And in, in all honesty, it's like, I mean, you know, as a jazz instructor, like when you're working with somebody on creativity and it's like, you, you have a lesson where you're, you're getting them and it's like, okay, now go, go try to write that, like write mm -hmm. that in text, you know, and explain that yeah. to somebody what you just did. That's really difficult. Yeah. Um, and so, um, so I, right now what's going on is Angela's kind of trying to help me out with, um, I have like, I have a whole outline, like 42 bullet points of different, um, different concepts and exercises, activities, things that I want to do. And so Angela's actually helping me with, I'm going to, I'm going to record the videos, send them off to her. She's going to edit them up and we've already done like a test on it. She's fantastic. Nice. Um, and, and, 
and we we really we really come together on like just the whole you know the approach to learning you know we we, we have a lot of the same um, philosophies on that so it's a it's a great match um, so nice. all that stuff's gonna happen it's just um but I am I am at a place where it's like I I um. I, there's so much on the stack right now that I can't really bring anything else in. I really need to like any of those type of things. I'm going to need to probably like hire out. Yeah. Well, um, well, well, that's a, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that, no, that, that sounds like a good, yeah, a good position to be in. Um, what I was going to say about that is I've done a lot of stuff like educate. I mean, a lot of the stuff I'm doing workshops for students, I'm serving students, students, but the most people, people that were most interested in my stuff as well are educators that want to teach it. And I've tried the educators training, and that has not landed as well as me actually teaching the material. Not all of it can be pre-recorded. A lot of what I do in person, none of that can go on Teachable. I have all these group improvisation games and all this stuff that can't go on there. But there's elements of it that can and that I don't have to do thousands of times anymore. It's like up there. And the teachers want to see that. They can show the videos for their students and they learn from that. And that's, that's been kind of a breakthrough for me. Instead of being like, here's how you can teach with it. I'm like, here's a model of me teaching with it. And... Um, and they and they dig it and the other i had i had another thought that just that just escaped oh, oh the other thing was the for me kind of like this kind of some of these projects i've had just rattling around in my head for years and years never got the mojo to going but for me like making fake deadlines and systems for myself i've got to finish this by you know december that doesn't work at all but for me a little <laughs> hack that worked is knowing when people are depending on me when people are waiting for it when they go let me know when it's done when I like commit to people, like the last ebook I did, I sent it out to my list. I said, you know, join my mailing list and uh, this ebook will be ready in October. And then people are like, oh, let me know when it's done. Oh, I'm still waiting for the book. And I'm like, oh shit, people are waiting for this. Like, I don't want to mm -hmm. let people down. And that, that hacks my system to prioritize it and make sure I get it done. Like that happened this, like I wanted my video course to be more polished and slick and branded and get the audio right. But I was like, no, I've got teachers waiting for this. I need to get it Duh, you know, it's going to be good enough. It's not going to be perfect, but you need to shift for me. Yeah. But I was like, oh, people are waiting for it. They need this. I've got to get it. I've got to get it done. So maybe that's hacking my executive. I don't know. I'd use my. And uh, I, I need to get more comfortable with that myself. I mean, yeah. I have I have email exchanges going on with a designer where like I'm like, I'm like, hey, can you check that? I think that's like this, that like ledger line is like slightly coming out oh, like, yeah. a little bit longer on the right hand side than the left hand side. Uh, he checks uh, out. He goes, he's like, it's one pixel off. He's like, your eyesight's better than mine. He's like, how did you notice that? Yeah, I was just like, I, I, don't I know. do that but, too. Like, and then that's I'm, so. I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. That that's that's a way to like hide. Yeah, that, yeah. When you get you that I mean? nitpicky, like, like it's so. Yeah. Leaving it like people would be. I I know this. I know this. I know people would be very happy. For me to just go live and talk and explain and yeah. share my stuff, and at the same time, I like what will happen is I will go live, I will, I will, I will do that, and then I will wa rewatch that video four times and think of like everything that I just spoke on. Oh, oh I'll, it's like I'll be so oh, annoyed. It's like it's like, like mix, yeah. It's like mixing a record. Yeah. I, meant, I, I said four yeah. chord when I meant five chord. Now somebody's gonna be confused, like you know, or, yeah. and things like that. So I, I get I get very wrapped up in in little details that um i've always struggled with that like my teacher has always told me like just go like create adjust later but i have a very difficult time with editing as i go and it prevents me from really getting um a lot accomplished in the creative part when it comes to actual like written material in a lesson no problem I can go all day yeah. long, but it's like, when it comes to written material, I have a very different, that's, that's, that, that's the interesting topic for me is figuring out how to let the editing go, like not think of the perfect way to say it right away. Just get the idea down mm -hmm. and come back yeah, that, and adjust later. That's huge. I'll say it's like mixing a record too. I get obsessed over these little details that no one else would yeah. care about, but then I listen to it with other musicians on the record and they go, oh, I wish I hadn't rushed right here. I'm like, what are you talking about? It sounds great. But like, do you hear how I articulated that note funny? Like. We're all caught up in these little details and some of those only matter to ourselves and it's really like a disservice to the people we're serving when we get caught up in our own little things mm. yeah it's, it's weird and like getting in the habit of launching that i mean i did that yeah some of these record you know i had like writing or records things that i was embarrassed to put out because it wasn't perfect and then once you get some good feedback and people love it and want more i can i've started to like associate link together that like throwing something imperfect like linking that with actually 
people liking it and making an impact and be like, okay, I have to do more of this, like, screwed up stuff and just, like, keep sending it out there. Because otherwise, I'll get trapped and tinkering and, like, never do anything. All right, yeah, Karen, I see. Yeah, you're... It's interesting because um, one thought that I've had this week, just the last couple of days, is precision precisionism as a discipline is much different than perfectionism as a standard that you're working towards. And this has been something that I've been practicing in my own, just in my own discipline as a musician, because I started working with a coach that, um, a vocal coach, which in the opera world is, we're putting things together musically. He's not giving me, he's not a technician, he's not a vocal voice teacher, he's, we're just going through, and what we're working on is Rosina, and there's a whole lot of just crazy coloratura, lots of fast notes, and learning how to find the sticking points that if everything else feels imprecise, as long as you hit those marks, you're gonna you're you're gonna be um, you're, you're gonna be golden. Oh and, my gosh, that's and, so cool! And you could apply that to everything we're talking about. Basically, yeah, basically, yeah. and also, I mean, the whole thing recording yourself and getting over it, listening to yourself that's just a desensitization thing. And it, for me, it took. I started recording my vocal coachings with the same guy about a year and a half ago or two years ago when I started working with him and just learning to do that hour of coaching and then later that day ripping the band-aid off and listening to myself because we mm. all hate hearing ourselves perform but you do it enough you do it enough even especially when you're in the process of learning something new which I am in a coaching as opposed to performing something and you start realizing okay those is, and especially when you listen to it that same day you realize the emotional feeling I was having at that point is not reflected on this recording. Like I was feeling a whole, I'm perceiving a whole lot more um, wrong things than actually came out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just done is better than perfect. <clears throat> the whole, the whole yeah, thing and I, I, I'm, I'll just say, I'll, I'll say real quick. I'm, I'm okay with the being on camera and recording myself and listening back. I'm, I'm more just concerned with like the information I said there was inaccurate. Like yeah, I meant to no, say the five know. chord when I said the four chord and oh. like, that's more of what I'm talking about. Oh, I, I'm I okay with the other stuff. And I totally know, like, like Steve said, from having done recording projects myself and people just saying me, like, I'm like, let me just do another take. And then like, I understand, like I'm in no frame of mind to be the one critiquing that at the moment. Like, so if right. somebody else says it's good, it's good. I just gotta let it, let it go. It, um... Um, beautiful people i have to run in just like three minutes um so we have to wrap up and this has been such a good conversation i'm sorry i have to i have to go soon uh but i i wanted to just make sure a couple things one if any of this stuff was rattling around you want to further the conversation i'm available later today if you want to message me um does everyone here know how to use kanban boards and understand stack ranking really well i don't know any of the words you just said kanban i i i the overarching thing of what I heard today, a Kanban board is a, it was a Japanese technique that Toyota kind of really put together as far as stack ranking and organization of operational flows, right? Uh, a modern representation of it is Trello. We use it in developing software um, where you're basically constantly outlining a process of something you're trying to do and you have columns, right? And those columns would be like idea, working, done as an example. Mm. And all of your ideas go in this one column and you stack rank them in terms of importance. And the, and the deal is, is whatever's on top of that list is what you'd work on until it's done, until you move it to done. And it's a really, I could, I would love to do a mastermind on it. Um, Cause I've studied a lot through building technology, but also it's great for music. It's great for, because everybody's got a million ideas that are really good. You know, Beth, you kicked it off. You got all these things. There's like four really cool projects that are all awesome. And, you, and we can't do them all without either massively outsourcing, but maybe if you visualize that you could see which one, because the thing that Steve said, he's like, I wrote my book eight years ago, which is exactly when I wrote my book, which is the same thing. And that book has led to so much stuff. It didn't make me a lot of money, but how can we like shorten that period? Because we're, we're all going to get to where we want to get, right? We're all going to want, we're all going to get to somewhere awesome and selling a lot of stuff and having a lot of great clients and growing, but how can we short it? or shorten that duration is that journey is by really, really focused on what matters, right? The most important thing and visualizing it is really helpful as far as being able to do a project. So maybe that's something we'll do another super small focus group like this again. I love this size. We all get to hang out and talk about that. I'll share some of the boards that, that, that we use as far as in like building bonds because they're massive 
you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of cards, each one where everybody works on and adds in design features and an entire team can work around them. Or um, I use them also for just like my studio, keeping track of, you know, different projects that I'm doing out, outside of it. So um, we have like one minute left. Uh, maybe we, um, Beth, you want to just send us off? I know we, you start out, I wanted to hear more about your projects and we didn't get a chance to, but I'd like to pick up when that, the next time we get a chance to again. Yeah, that'd be great. I, I love the Kanban concept too, because it is all about planning and prioritization, which is, is an executive function skill. So if you focus on your money task, I think it's uh, all yeah. right. So yeah, I'd love to kind of be a part of this again. I didn't have a meeting today and I'm gonna try to block this time out from now on. It's uh, it's important. So thanks, Eric. Thanks um, you, everybody. Oh my gosh, what this was so great. What a great crew. I thank you guys. So, I'm sorry I have to run. I could talk about this stuff all day, but uh, I'm gonna listen to it. I'll post it and I think we'll have some great talking points to kind of come back to. So anyway, Tony, you have a totally different kid next to you now, by the way, in case you haven't noticed. <laughs> you how, many kid, out. how many kids There's do you have? Sleeping up. There's another one sleeping upstairs. So. He can't stop. He can't stop. Yeah. Hey, much love. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. This was an amazing, great hour together. See ya. Thank you.